みなさん、こんにちは。グリッドトークポッドカスト、ヘヨクゾ。I just had to flex the fact that I can actually speak Japanese.、Um, welcome to episode 331 of the Grid Talk podcast, and today we are here to review qualifying for the 2023 Japanese Grand Prix. My name is Louis Edwards, and joining me today we have from the Hit, A- Hit the Apex Media,、uh, Jawa. Hello. Grid Talk and Formula Talk host Tom Downey. Hello. And another fellow Grid Talk presenter and a B Tech version of me, Away Medford. Hello. Jokes, of course. But before we get into this episode, we of course must thank our sponsor for this episode, Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting from your favorite casino and card games, available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BLEAV, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, Jawad, today wasn't really qualifying. It was a romping. I think this is the easiest way to say it. Max Verstappen has bounced back phenomenally from Singapore. That Red Bull is working and it seems to be more dominant than what we've seen at other parts of this season. Yeah, exactly. And I was just reading a、uh, tweet from Karun Chandok saying that. That lap,、uh, the final lap that he did in Q3, reminiscent of you know, Senna's Monaco lap in 88 or you know, Lewis Hamilton's lap in Singapore 2018. It was just a phenomenal lap. And you know, I don't want to say, oh, just also because they've got a fresh Honda power unit in the back of that Red Bull this weekend as well, which would have given it extra horsepower, but he just looked connected for the whole lap going through you know, the, the tricky parts, the S's, Sector One, which has been such a You know, sore point for some drivers this weekend because the tyres have really struggled through it, but he hooked it up nicely. And then to better the lap time that he did,、um, his first lap time in Q3 with, you know, 128, 877. Wow. Like, you know, he's just, it's, it's <laughs> anyone who thought that, oh, you know, after Singapore they were gone. Well, here you go. Here's the emphatic statement and they're back and in a position where they'll, Likely wrap up the constructors' championship tomorrow. Yes, it is、uh, very possible for them to do so this weekend. So I think they have to outscore Mercedes by 18 points and make sure they are not outscored by Ferrari by 24 points, which allows them to wrap up the championship.、Um, but yeah, it was an absolute. Mega job from Verstappen today, and it was a very, very yeah, it was just a sensational lap. Um, Wayne, we'll move on to you, uh, next. Um, McLaren, uh, wrapping up uh, the top three with Piastri in P2 and Norris in P3. We had a bit of a, a talk on our Slack channel before the um qualifying started who was going to get that p2 slot was it going to be piastri or norris and a lot of people including myself did go with lando norris but it was oscar piastri who's gone p2 there's upgrades now onto his car and he's right up there yet again just like what we saw in silverstone it's a brilliant problem to have if, have if you're uh if you're uh mclaren isn't it um you know you you've got two world-class drivers clearly um the car's working well You know, all they all they have to do is sort of squabble between themselves. I will say, it's also it's not a huge margin. Like, let's not be let's not be making things as you know tenths of a second here. It's 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 under point. It's 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 under five tenths of a、uh, sorry five hundredths of a second. So,、um, you know, I I I I wouldn't be too worried、uh, if 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 it was McLaren. And it looks like they've kind of got the both they both got the maximum out of the car there, which is excellent.、Um, Yeah, but Piastri, honestly, it's his first, well, like I say, it's his first season in Formula One.、Um, and he's showing exactly why he has been hired, exactly why there's been a contract extension.、Um, it, 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 it sets him up in an excellent place、uh, for the race tomorrow, particularly with a resurgent Ferrari. 
or a day less so now, uh, this weekend at least. Um, yeah, they, 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 it puts them in a, in a position where, you know, if, if, if Perez can't get through uh, the Ferraris tomorrow, then, you know, the, the McLarens can use, I mean, I, I think for half a second a lap is, pro, is maybe a little bit insurmountable, um, but it, it does put them in the ability to uh, sort of um, maybe, maybe play with the strategy and, and use that against Red Bull um, uh, in a way that maybe can they can pick up a fortuitous win. Um, I say that. Um, I, I just think it's an option, but I don't think it's really going to happen, let's be honest. <laughs> Verstappen's, Verstappen's showed his class there and, and, just, and just laid down the yardstick, really. Yeah, he'll probably have a 30 second lead come turn two tomorrow. Let's face it. He's, he's absolutely wiping the floor, but it is incredible for McLaren. Um, as you know, Aston Martin is starting to falter. They are closing in rapidly on that P4 in the constructors championship, which I don't think any of us would have thought of, uh, like at the start of this season, given just how poor that McLaren car was, but it is now completely changed. And P2 and P3 definitely reflects that they are probably, you could probably give a good argument that they are the second best team, just in terms of general consistency uh, on the grid right now. Uh, Tom, we'll move to you. P4, Charles Leclerc, um, and P6 for Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. It did look as though they may have been a little bit closer for that battle of P2, um, but Charles was about a tenth off Piastri um, signs uh, about three tenths further back. Do you think that Ferrari's opportunity is going to come in the race tomorrow to maybe get a place on that podium or is McLaren going to be a little too far out of reach? Um, I think Ferrari definitely got potential to get oh, one, one car on the podium. I was expecting a little bit more from them today, to be honest, you know, given obviously the win last week in them. Um, in Singapore, and then your know, signs has been uh, signs was obviously P1 for, for the last two races. Before that, I was ex- perhaps I was overhyping them in my mind, I'm expecting a little bit more. I think it's been perhaps a little bit of a bump back down to earth because they've been beaten. You know, I mean, everybody was well, the entire grid has it, you know, quite embarrassed by Max today, to be fair. Um, but you know, both 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 of McLaren's right up there. Um, you know, it, it was. It, it was it, Ferrari just in this sort of like weird state where they have like a few races where they're been absolute worldies, and then next thing you know, they're sort of just like they're in Q3, but they're not really battling with McLaren. And you know, they've been split by I think, I think they've got split by George Russell, I want to say, in, in, in P4. Um, you know, whoever it was in P4 who, who who split them, I could be completely wrong. I can't remember. I'm still quite tired, to be honest. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it's just you know they 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 just sort of just have this really weird sort of ebb and flow to their season. So, or or lack of ebb and flow, even much like my words right now. Um, you know, t- t- tomorrow I don't know. You, you know. It it depends what happens in front of them because you know Max hasn't been particularly good off the line. You know Piastri gets ahead like McLaren did in Silverstone, then you know Max might end up on the back foot, and then Ferrari could you know perhaps gain from that. We don't, I you know it, it's it although it doesn't appear to be it on the face of it because we got Max you know out front and then we've got the two McLarens ahead. It is fairly open tomorrow, and you know that that race start you know that that could prove to be critical because. Overtaking Ryan Suzuki, I mean, you know, you've got the main straight, and don't get me wrong, you know, it, it looks like a super fun track to drive. You know, a lot of the drivers like it. You know, it, unless someone you know makes quite a daring move, perhaps into Spoon, or you know, or, or, you know, if you're really bold, you can go to 130R or something. Um, I'm not too sure where they would perhaps gain a place. You know, so I think quite a lot does rest on the race start tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it though. Mm. It is a uh, Checo Tom Horrocks' favorite driver Perez. Um, he separates the two Ferraris in P5. Um, but yeah, it is going to be quite close. And of course, we do have to remember that Checo is still in a Red Bull. He may not always drive like he is, but he is in the Red Bull and he definitely has a shot at the podium. And that's why I want to ask you, Jared. Um, we saw just how effort- effortlessly uh, Max just walked away with qualifying today but Sergio Perez P5 
seven tenths, well, seven, almost pushing eight tenths um, off the back of his teammate. And in a weekend where we're talking a lot about driver changes and driver moves, Checo still at this point of the season being, you know, the worst, you know, being seven, eight tenths off your teammate is not good. And it's still not <laughs> um, what you want to be seeing from that number two Red Bull driver. No, and I feel like we've become, I feel like I, I've certainly become accustomed to seeing this and I'm I just accepted as being the norm that, you know, the second Red Bull driver will, you know, inevitably in qualifying be that far off uh, the leading pace. And, you know, yeah, he's he's actually been in worse spots this year, as we know, and, you know, failing to make it to Q3 or out of even Q1 at times. So, Fifth doesn't seem too bad. And like, you know, you were saying earlier that um, in the race, certainly we'll see a possibility for him to challenge for the podium because he is in that Red Bull after all. And, you know, like you could always go back to that old argument that qualifying's never been Checo's um, strong suit, even though, yeah, you're in the most dominant car on the grid, um, you know, of possibly of all time, if you want to go that far as well with the run that they've been on this season. But it's just, yeah, you know, I'm sort of consigned to that feeling of, you know, this is the norm for, for Checo and Red Bull. Um, not un- really underwhelming, you know, maybe I should be underwhelmed because, you know, you should expect both those cars at the front. You know, you look back at the days of, you know, Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber, you know, they'd be constantly finishing 1-2 when they had a dominant car. So, you know, why isn't it the same for Perez? But I feel like given the fact that, you know, he's... It's it's a bit of a stretch for whoever is in third, you know, the likes of Hamilton or Alonso to chase him down for second in the championship. You know, he's going to be off free this year, but you know, next year will be really telling. Um, given the fact that you know, if teams behind Red Bull close the gap and it's a bit of a tighter challenge at the front, that's when they'll probably be sweating on you know that um, second seat and the performance coming out of it. But yeah, you know, as far as fifth is concerned. You know, it's better than what he has done um, at times this season, but it surely could be better because you've got two different teams ahead of you um, and, you know, in the race as well. Uh, while the Red Bull is the faster car, it's going to come down to the race craft. And, you know, even there, we've seen Perra struggle at times this year against the likes of the Ferraris and McLarens. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah, we've definitely seen it on multiple occasions. And if we think about, you know, a lot of people are comparing this race in Suzuka to that of Silverstone. And if you remember back to Silverstone, Checo wasn't really ever really in that running to, you know, have a good result, despite the fact that, you know, Max, even though he did get, you know, beaten off the line by the um, McLarens, was then had a relatively sort of easy time of it, while Checo wasn't really um, someone you you gave much thought about um, during that race. Um, Owain... P7, P8, uh, locking out the fourth row is the Mercedes. Uh, Hamilton, ahead uh, of Russell by about three tenths. Um, going into this, I was expecting Mercedes to be a little bit more competitive than they were. They were looking pretty good in free practice, but something didn't quite click for them in these sessions. And there was even you know talk on the broadcast of them going, one of them being out in Q2, but they both made it through, and but seven and eight is not probably where they would have hoped to have ended up. I mean, it's not Mercedes standard. That's that's the thing. Um, and it they've they've looked. I don't know. I didn't see free practice three, um, but from what I saw in free practice two, uh, unless there was you know something dramatically different. So you have to correct me if I'm wrong. But I I kind of expected it. I'll be honest. Um, I don't. I, I think Mercedes is. <sighs> So something's either not clicking with the car, um, you know. Obviously, they're going to try and maximise it, but I think I think of late we've seen, you know, apart from even the highs of um, of last weekend, they've just sort of been just slightly going backwards a little bit. And I think they, it, I, I I would put forward the theory that they might have moved on to next year's car uh, by this point, and they're just seeing out the year with this one. Um, it's 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 not an amazing performance, and I think they're just suffering as well from the fact that. 
we've got a resurgent Ferrari. McLaren has taken a clear step forward. And uh, unfortunately, that shuffled them down the table to this is probably I, I would put it out there. that This is probably where the true pace of the car is um, right now. It's a decent performance by that. They're both, you know, they're, they're, they're locking out. Uh, what is it? The fourth row of the grid here. Um, so, you know, that's relatively useful. They can maybe take advantage of some things in front. But I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's an amazing performance. Um it seems a bit sort of par for the course uh, right now, but I, I kind of, you know, for a team that's so used to winning, it's got to hurt being this far down. Um, you know, it's obviously still inside the top 10, but it's it's it's, it's a sort of a cause for concern because at this point they're going to be t- picking up sort of four or five points, um, maybe 10 total, um, assuming, they, assuming they finish where they start. But, yeah, I, I I don't think it's an amazing performance from Mercedes, but I, I yeah, that's I I think it's it's below what they can do, but I, I think it's probably their true performance at this point. Yeah, unfortunately, we kind of have to look at Singapore as like this mega anomaly. You know, when you take um, the Red Bulls out of the equation, it it does kind of boost Mercedes sort of standing within how they sort of stand against the likes of the Ferraris and the McLarens. And I think for a lot of teams and so a few drivers, this has been a bit of a slap back to reality. And unfortunately, I think that's hit Mercedes probably more than any of the other front runners. Um, P9 uh, then, Tom, is the homeboy, Yuki Tsunoda. Um, His teammates, um, however, temporary teammates, as has now been officially confirmed, uh, Liam Lawson in P11. Now, apart from their qualifying results, which for AlphaTauri this season have been good, I think it is time that we do talk about their lineup for next season, which has been confirmed um, very early this morning that it will be uh, Yuki Tsunoda and Daniel Ricciardo. First, I think, question I have for you, Tommy, is was that the right choice? No. Uh, and yeah, that's all you get. Um, no, uh, no, um, oh boy, here we go. So, and I'm aware that we have an Australian on this show. Joe, I'd love you, mate, but you might want to turn your headset off. Um, Danny Rick should not be anywhere near an F1 race seat. Um, he is, he got found out really when he joined McLaren. He did all right at Renault. And then got the pound signs and then absolutely dropped it. Um, he got absolutely slapped about by Lando for two seasons and left a shadow of his former self. He then joined Red Bull as a media um, personality, and uh, it's uh, and don't get me wrong, you know he's he's wicked for the team. He's great for F one, uh, and he and it's good to have him around. But he is not fit to be in a race seat. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have replaced De Vries. Um, you know, because you know, De Vries was you know, absolutely awful, bless him. But Danny Rick, if this would have been, even if this would have been like the Renault era Danny Rick, I would have been able to, to, to understand why. But, you know... What we saw from him that in the season, we're kind of yes. Oh, when did he win the next? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, that's only because you know Hamilton and Max got a bit rom- got a bit rompy at turn one, basically. Um, you know, if you look at how many times he was knocked out in Q one, knocked out in Q two, got lapped by his teammate, all the rest of it. Um, it's yeah, it, it's yeah, it's just I really feel for Liam Lawson because he has proved over the last sort of three, four races that he is a quality driver and he is he is the real deal. He came into that seat midway through that Zanvolt weekend when it was absolutely bucketing down with rain and he kept the car on the circuit in those conditions which at a difficult, difficult circuit like Zanvolt, all you can ask for. And the other thing I want to say about Danny Rick on in that instance is I know he's out injured but a driver who has done 200 and something Grand Prix, you wouldn't expect them to make such a rookie error like he did in Zanvoort that led to a broken hand in the first place. I know he was trying to take avoiding action, but if, if there are double wave yellows because there's been an incident in front of you, 
need to have your wits about you. And he didn't. And look what happened. I know that sounds harsh, but, you know, that's that that's what it is. So, yeah, so I I, I feel for, for Liam Lawson. Also, the other thing you've got to, you've got to sort of ask yourself about Alpha Tauri is this is, at the moment anyway, the Red Bull junior team. Um, you know, with that young up and coming driver like Daniel Ricciardo, um, they've got uh, Yuki in there for what a fourth season now. He's been in that seat since twenty twenty one. You you have to ask yourself: Are they actually a Red Bull Junior team? Are they just an affiliate team by this point? You know, there's the whole rumor that they're not going to be. You know, that they might be Andretti. There might be something completely separate next year. So. That seems just in a weird state at the minute, you know, with, you know, obviously Franz Toss retiring at the end of the year. It's just, yeah, it's odd. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot, it's, it, there is quite a lot to unpack with this, uh, with this announcement. I'm sure you'll be talking more on Formula Talk about the sort of the Red Bull juniors and where they currently stand. But we may as well ask the Aussie how he feels. You got, I mean, you do have, uh, a countryman already in the mm-hmm. in Formula One. We've already, you know, sung his praises earlier in the podcast. Oscar Piastri is doing an amazing job, so it's not like there's a desperate need for an Australian on the grid. But is Daniel Ricciardo still fit to be in Formula One, or maybe should he move on to something else like NASCAR, maybe V8 supercars, if he just wants to see out the rest of his career? Is Formula One the place for him to do this? Look, it might surprise everyone that uh, I feel more along the lines of what Tom said earlier. Uh, Yeah, he got found out at McLaren and I thought, you know, that's it. That's him done in F1, as sad as it is, because he was for, you know, through the early days of the turbo hybrid era, the, you know, one of the strongest drivers. He certainly went over to Red Bull in his first stint and wowed everyone. And then it was just... um, a bit confusing, but understandable why he left Red Bull at the um, in the first place. But it, the quote of Christian Horner back then, or you know what I think it was on Drive to Survive, he might have said it um, following the announcement that uh, Ricardo was running from a fight back then, and I still think that that um, applies today when you think about his career. Tra- trajectory and this is where with with piastri as well i'm hoping he doesn't make any silly career decisions but you know locking him down at mclaren for another three years which i don't know if we mentioned that earlier um got announced as well um yeah he sh- and alpha towery as well toro rosso adidas hugo boss racing whatever they're going to be called next year um you know their purpose was to bring in new talent for Red Bull and without going into a rant about, you know, Red Bull and their junior program and the way they treat drivers as I'm, as I'm known to do, um, I feel like there hasn't been any driver in recent times, you know, since Max Verstappen really that you were like, hang on, you know, this, this kid's going to do really well. Yes. We had Gasly and Albon, but you know, they unfortunately, couldn't um, deliver the goods when they're in the main team, but then there's the argument that they were undercooked anyway when they were selected. I mean, for Gasly to uh, go there after a single season at Toro Rosso, um, and then Albon had a year and a half, uh, you know, what time is that? So, and can any of us on the show picture Tsunoda ever being a Red Bull driver? I mean, that's the that's a dichotomy in itself that you know, you've got this driver who's now going to be going into his fourth season with the team next year, and yet he doesn't look like someone that we can see in a Red Bull racing seat. So where does the the future lie for Red Bull? Um, so, yeah, with, with Ricardo, it's, you know, while it's all good commercially and I'm sure the Grand Prix Corporation here is going to get a field day out of having two Aussies on the grid next year at, at Albert Park as well, um, I feel like... You know, Lawson, he's shown enough to warrant that, you know, he needs to be given a full season because if not now, when is the question? Has he has he missed the boat? I mean, how would he feel 
after his result in Singapore, for example, you know, getting the best result that the team's had all season to then be delivered this news. And, you know, what happens when Ricardo comes back after his injury, whether it's the next race or after that, um, you know, are they going to see decline in performance? And Ricardo, for me, has never been as, as as good a driver as he was in the past. And this is the thing that got him caught out at, at McLaren as well, um, is the fact that Technically, he's not as, you know, dialed in as the likes of Lando Norris and, you know, whoever else. So how do you expect him to be developing a car if that's what the role he's going to be uh, conducting at Alpha Tauri's to, to help develop that car? And, you know, he's got experience and he's got the race craft and knowledge, but the technical stuff, I mean, that's how he struggled in the McLaren. So how is he going to take Alpha Tauri forward? You know, I think having a fresh set of eyes with, you know, Lawson and Sonoda, who's gradually gotten better and better um, as time's gone on, they would have been my pick for next year. And sorry if that went on for a bit longer than it should have. No, it's fine. It's, it's, it's great to hear. And away, and I guess finally we need to talk about the – elephant that's no longer going to be in the room and that is um liam lawson um a lot of um f1 journals that i've seen speaking about it on twitter have said that lawson is signed to be a reserve driver for both um alpha tauri and red bull next season that'll be the role that he has therefore that would suggest that he isn't going to be taking perhaps that vacant seat um well currently vacant seat at williams next season so has, like Jawa said, has he missed the boat or will he be banking on an opportunity maybe after next season if Daniel Ricciardo does have maybe a decline or is just not up to the task of developing that Alpha Tower? Um, I think he's just, a, he, you gotta, he's got to look at this as like a blessing because um, there was a certain amount of it where you, you, he wouldn't have expected this. It's come, it's, you know, the, the, the cards have landed in his favour um, and you know, to be fair to him, um, despite uh, you know, despite his issue, well, despite his already he is not he's not getting into uh, into Q three, um, with a. To be honest, he could have gone faster, and that would have got him in. Um, but that's besides the point. He's done pretty much everything right. Um, you know, I think he's just come up against, unfortunately, a bit of a dead end. Not a dead end, but just uh, you know, as much as everything's gone right for him to get him into the seat. Um, he, he's come up against the issues of the plans at, pl- uh, at play. Like, um, you you can't entirely fault someone for for gaining an injury. Um, yes, I think he was silly, he was silly to have his hands on the wheel, Daniel Ricardo, but whatever that's happened. So it, it was fortuitous that he got the seat anyway, and he's and he's doing everything right. Um, I don't know what the contract situation would be for him being poached by another team. Um, but I think that's something you've got to be wary of if you're Red Bull um, running that driver academy right now, because the the guy looks like the real deal. Um, he looks like the kind of guy, the, the the kind of person, you know, he he is like your Piastri's of the world, or 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 you know your Max Verstappen's, where they come along and they're instantly good. Um, you know, they just they they they're, they're the sort of people that we see legal disputes over, for example. Um, so I, I, I think Red Bull do have to manage this bit carefully, but I don't, I don't think, I think Lawson has been a bit unfortunate on the timing, but it's not like he's done anything wrong here. I think he's, he's, you know, taking it for all it is. And to be honest, he wouldn't be expecting to get the seat anyway, if he wasn't in the car. I think he's, it, it just feels more disappointing because he's got the seat in the car and, um, and he's done so well with it. Um, I, I think that's why we're, we're having this discussion at all is just, is just because of that, um, if you know, if he'd come in and just been bang average, then I I, I don't think this comes up. Yeah, it it, it it's definitely a tricky one um, to unpack. And AlphaTauri, this we got to remember that this probably decision wasn't made yesterday. This decision was probably made a little while ago. The contracts have you know taken their time to be sorted, and now they are just being announced. Like. Is rare that I think in Formula One that contracts get signed and then the next day they're announced. It's it's a more lengthy um, process than that. But we will get through to the second half of the grid now and actually get back onto the events of today. Um, P10 and P17. 
uh, for Aston Martin, Tom. Um, Fernando Alonso maintaining its perfect streak of getting into uh, Q3 every single race. Lance Stroll, this will be his, I think, 10th um, time he's missed out on Q3. Um, I mean, it's the same old, same old. Like, is there a point where the writing will eventually be on the wall for Stroll? No, because it's Adam's the team. Um, and you know, I, I'm I'm getting. How many times have I been sitting here slating Stroll? Um, I mean, Alonso wasn't great today by any stretch. You know, the Aston Martin definitely was not in a good way today. Um, but he still, you know, he still, he still, yes, he snuck it through to to Q3. Um, you know, Alonso just covering off very quickly. You know, he snuck it through to Q3. He was on the cusp in Q1 and Q2. Um, he didn't bother going out for a second one in Q3. I think it's going to be a case of damage limitation for them tomorrow. Lance Hall, on the other hand, what an absolute waste of space. Um, you know, we we saw it, we saw it last week you know, where he didn't even make the start of the race good. Um, this week, you know, you know, he starts in what I think he's P18 or, or something. Um, I, I, I'll have to double check. Um, and if you did just tell me apologies, I'm still a little bit tired. Um, you know, he's um, he's just how can you be an F1 for so long and still be so utterly, utterly useless? That that's that's what I don't understand. It's just that like, you know he's just, I'm you know I'm, I'm not I'm not you know, using using any bad language. Um, but he's you know it, Stroll is just he just oh, he's P seventeen. Oh, well done, you aren't qualified. Nico Hulkenberg, uh, Joe Guan Yu, and someone who crashed in a Williams. Well done. Um, mind you, that would have been him and that Williams a few years ago crashing. Um, you know, it's just you know, he, he's just he's just utterly useless, and he can't keep living on past success. You know, like people go, oh, when he got the palm position in twenty twenty, bro, that was three seasons ago. You know, and, and that 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 was in a pink Mercedes. You know, he's got a good, he, you know, he's got he's really started off with a good car this year, and his teammate has absolutely trounced him. And you know, his best race is when he was still recovering from falling off his bike. So that tells you all, all you need to know. It's also his attitude that absolutely does my head in because he he's so sort of lackadaisical about things. He just doesn't care. He's just like, oh, the, oh, the car, man. You know, it's just like, mate, just shut up and drive the thing. You know, just get good for God's sake. You know, he's he's just useless. And I know I'm really going on him, but I don't care. Um, you, you know, basically, basically, don't care. So, um, you, you know, he's um, he, he's just he, he's putting Aston Martin in a bit of a predicament. We're saying like, when's the writing on the wall? The writing's been on the wall since about twenty nineteen, I'd say. Um, you know, and you know, Aston Martin, they've got the likes of Felipe Drogovic, for example, F two champion from last year, sitting there, not even getting that much uh, free practice one time, let alone you know looking anywhere near a race seat. Drogovic should be in that car anyway. You know, he's he's F2 champ for, for a reason. You know, he'll be on the sidelines next year because Stroll's not going to be out that seat unless he decides to try and go and be a professional tennis player or you know, maybe join the recent Harvard, um, you know, crying into their paychecks or whatever. So he's just, um, he, he's until Alonso leaves, and I don't know when Alonso will leave because he's on a multi year contract. It's just that I don't know. And Stroll is just, oh, it's just pathetic. I don't know when Alonso is going to leave either. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows. I don't think even Fernando knows where he's going to leave. He's like, ah, just another season, another season. He probably will just, he probably has a sign in his office that says, I will leave tomorrow. And it'll just, it'll just always stay there. Um, right, John. Uh, uh, the Alpines, both out in. Uh, Q2, Gasly 12th, Ocon 14th. Again, not an ideal um, qualifying for Alpine. We really should be expecting to see them more in that Q3 fight. But there's definitely opportunities for points, maybe for Gasly. You know, Sonoda, he's had horrific luck for the last two uh, races. He's not completed a single racing lap since August. And then, of course, Alonso in that Aston Martin that is just not looking that brilliant. So, a good start tomorrow could put him uh, nicely in the points. Yeah, that's provided if their cars don't either trip over each other, like we've seen at points this season, or, um, you know, succumb to their own poor reliability they've had. I think last uh, 
a couple of races, Monza, Singapore, obviously with Ocon, um, that we saw uh, bringing out that virtual safety car with a gearbox fail. So, yeah, I definitely thought in qualifying spec that a circuit that doesn't rely so much on, you know, your power unit or your engine that Alpine would probably be a bit further up. But, yeah, seeing them knocked out in Q2 kind of, you know, with their final laps nowhere near um, that Q3 time... Um, I don't know whether to be disappointed or underwhelmed or just accept the fact that this is Alpine at the moment. It's, you know, uh, mediocrity is becoming, you know, quite um, quite the norm there at the Enstone team, which is really sad for all the lovely people working there. But, yeah, you know, they could possibly move forward tomorrow. Can't rule that out. But, you know, they've had their own terrible reliability and, and dramas you know, inter-team dramas and whatnot. So I think just bringing the cars home in one piece and, um, you know, whether it's in the points or not in the points is probably going to be uh, a win for them. Yeah, it's uh, a... <laughs> yeah, uh, Singapore was not the, uh, not a great one. Of course, you have to also remember that their car can spontaneously set on fire at random intervals. So hopefully that won't happen. Um Away in P13 for Alex Albon, uh, missed out on Q3 by just under a tenth of a, uh, a second. A pretty good performance, but his teammates, Logan Sargent, the only driver not confirmed for next season, uh, crashed it on his warm up lap. Yeah, it's not a good look. Um, I, it's a difficult corner, in fairness to him. Um, I don't know if it's off camber or on camber, um, but it is downhill coming on throttle. I think he might have gone a bit too slowly um, before sort of spooling up onto onto the lap. That's what he looked like. He was going onto a flyer. Um, and uh, and he just, I, I think it just kicked out on him and it started to power slide and he couldn't collect it. There's, um, at that point, um, it's unfortunate. Um, it, it's one of those things, it doesn't make him look good. Um, and I... See the thing is, I also struggle to think that he would have been any higher anyway. All he's, all, a lot of what he's done is just cost the team a big rebuild job, um, which you know, as James Well said um, in, a, in the interview on Sky, is it'll be fine. But obviously, they, I, th- I think he alluded to it. There was a the, the, the part of the reason that they don't have as many spares maybe as they would like is because of probably the crash damage sub- uh, sustained by Lo- Logan Sargent um, at various points throughout the uh, throughout the season. So it's it's one of those things of, you know, it, 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 it's not a good look. And, and you can imagine, I imagine the pressure is going to get to him now because it, you know, it, it, it's only going to start to go worse. It's, you know, he's crashing. So he's kind of trying harder to, to make sure, you know, he has to have a good weekend. Every, every weekend becomes a critical weekend, you know, when, the, when we're looking at, um, at the contracts and then trying to get the sort of opinion of the team, um, and you know that that just puts more pressure on, and it causes things like this, and it leads to even more rookie errors. And you know, very very quickly, you're you're out of F1 because because of that. I, I hope that doesn't get to him because I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see for the good of the sport, really. So you know, someone like Sergeant be good. But I, unfortunately, I think it it remains to be seen whether I, I I don't think he's in a safe seat um at this point, and I, I think that only gets harder from here. Yeah, I mean, like it's. The- Let's be honest, it's not easy being a rookie in Formula One. And I've always had the opinion that you should always at least give every driver a year before you really start to judge them. But we've seen the way that the season's gone. That fact that De Vries has got the boot mid-season. Oscar Piastri has been challenging for podiums. He's been, you know, he won, um, he almost won a sprint race, you know. like, And then you've got Logan Sargent who has... Yet to score a point? Am I wrong? Has Sergeant scored a point this? Yeah. So you've got it. It it is big question marks over the head of Logan Sergeant. I think it's very unsurprising at this point that he is the only driver on the grid without a contract for next season. And you know Williams have got to do it themselves a cost analysis to to figure out whether these crashes are going to be worth it because. At the end of the day, this is what Schumacher got dumped out of Haas for. Um, right, um, Tom. Um, quick chat about Haas. You know, everyone's favourite team, Haas. 
Um, Kevin Magnuson outqualified uh, Hulkenberg again. It's it's quite nice to see K Mag uh, start to to pull his qualifying act together and start actually taking it to Hulkenberg once in a while. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, K K Mag has sort of been sort of been rather anonymous this year, and for once, he's actually out qualifying a decent teammate. Um, you know, because Hulkenberg sort of come in and sort of giving him a bit of a boot up the backside, uh, sort of you made them realize, oh, hang on, you know, I need to actually, you know, need need to need to get my proverbial in order, and whilst it's not. You know, whilst having us some not a great day at the office, let's be fair. Um, you know, I think they're always going to struggle on a circuit like this. It's nice to see that K Mag is sort of getting a bit of second wind. Um, do I think it will mean anything sort of like in 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 the long run? No. Um, I think that you know their their pace only goes one way, sadly. Um, and and you know they haven't got very far to go tomorrow. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a bit of a tough take at the office for them, methinks. But, no, it's, it's, it's good to see K-Mag at least sort of up there. And Hulk is... He, Hulk's always been, you know, sort of like fairly... He, he's always been pretty good at qualifying. Um, his sort of race craft and, you know, obviously the whole no podium thing, you know, is a bit of a testament to that. Um, but, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it, it's, it's Hass, I, I want them to do well because I do like Hass, but they're sort of just in this like weird transition phase a bit. Then, yeah, they're, they're definitely um, a shadow of the team that they started out with at the start of the season. It is, um, yeah, it's not been great for their development um, this year, and they're definitely paying the price for that. And Jared, we will come to you last to talk about a team that, let's frankly, I think most people have just given up on. I think the team is slowly giving up on. Um, Alfa Romeo, um, P16, P19, uh, Bottas, uh, outqualifying Joe by about three tenths. Um, both of them were, you know, um, came under investigation for the stewards for exceeding the maximum amount of time both of them been acquitted of that uh i think the fia said that they were going fast enough in the plate uh, like they showed in areas where they could go fast enough they were so therefore they got away with it yeah i don't know if the camera quite picked up my eye roll when you said that uh no further action was um came of that like you know talk about alfa romeo in a second but like, what's the point of having these rules? And I know we're talking about in the live chat as well on Slack. What's the point of having these rules if, you know, they're not going to, you know, enforce them or do anything about them or, you know, and now apparently they were going quick enough to to warrant not uh, getting a penalty. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a joke. Um, but anyway, until something happens, you know, an accident or something, they're not going to really do anything, are they? But, yeah, Alfa Romeo. Yeah. Um, I mean, can I just copy paste the go to grid talk line of, oh, you know, they're just sitting there waiting for the Audi money to roll in. <laughs> Basically, that's that's their season. And, you know, there's there's nothing really more to uh, go into about their individual performances. Um, Bottas did fall off his bike earlier in the day on his way to the circuit. Someone pictured got a good picture of that. So, you know, maybe. That was a um a sign of what was to come in qualifying as well with his uh, elimination in Q1 and yeah Joe uh, being the last of the classified qualifiers so yeah I don't really see them doing anything in the race or moving moving forward as much so yeah they're just biding their time another day at uh, Alfa Romeo yeah I have always had a slight feeling that. If the Chinese Grand Prix get cancelled every year, Joe would just keep having his contract renewed until he could finally have a home race. <laughs> <laughs> All the sponsors that have backed him into the into the sport so far could finally have their like full marketing days <laughs> in Shanghai. Uh, maybe that should be a good tactic um, for for Joe to try and get the the, uh, the Chinese Grand Prix cancelled every year, and maybe he might stick around for a few more years. Um, so we have gone through all um 20 uh drivers. Um, it's time for some predictions for tomorrow's race. So, Owain, we'll start with you. Um, 
what is going to be your podium for tomorrow's race? I thought by making a joke of being like, I don't know, Gasly for the win with, you know, Ocon in second and Bottas in third. But let's be honest, it's just going to, it's just going to be Verstappen. <laughs> it's just going to be Verstappen, you know. But failing, you know, you know, apart from a, a, an incredibly humiliating um, mechanical failure for Verstappen, um, or, or you know, or, or, or a sort of an uncharacteristic crash, he's going to be in first. Um, and I'm going to go with. In fact, I'm just going to go with the po- with the, with the pole. Sorry, with the with the first three things. I don't think there's going to be a change of uh, a change of position. I think I'm going to go Piastri second and then Nor- Norris third. Mm, fair enough. Um, Tom, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say uh, Max is going to be P1, but I think the McLarens are going to be the other way around. And then we Norris P2, and I'm back in Piastri for P3. Okay, it was got a theme going. Jared, are you going to break it? Yes, yeah. The uh, top three stays as it is, as it is for me: Verstappen, Piastri, and Norris. And just getting excited at the fact that we might see uh, Oscar take his first podium in F one, and at a good time as well for the Australian audience. Yeah, so it's a nice one for the. For the Japanese audience as well. Um, I am going to go with Verstappen to win, uh, Lando Norris in second, and Checo Perez to finish third. Um, and then quickly wrap it up with bold predictions. So, Owain, bold prediction. Uh, Mercedes one two, just based on tire uh, t- on 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 tire saving alone. Um, I'm going to go with that. Fair enough, Tom. Uh, I'm going to say Stroll keeps it out the wall. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Jared? Uh, both Alpha Tauris in the points. I think I said that last weekend as well, but, you know, go Honda Power and go Lawson. Shove it to the Red Bull Hierarchs for not giving you a seat next year. Very good. Um... I am going to go with both Williams in the points because I may be bold and also very daring with that prediction. So that is the end of our show. And as ironically, the sun is now setting in the land of the rising sun. uh, So does this podcast come to the end? So thank you uh, everyone for listening. Um, Of course, Grid Talk is available on YouTube, where most episodes are recorded live, such as this one, um, as well as Amazon Fire, Spotify, uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, and Pocket Cast. Just search for the Formula One Grid Talk podcast for all of our back catalog of shows with previews and reactions to qualifying and race results. Um, of course, on YouTube as well, make sure to hit the um, the bell notification when you subscribe so you actually get notified every single time that we go live and if you do enjoy the podcast please leave a like it means a lot um please consider supporting the channel on patreon so we can get better mics uh lights and recording equipment uh for all of our hosts and um yeah uh thank you just uh for listening i have not done this in a long time so i have completely forgotten the script um Plug time. Uh, Jared, let's start with you. Uh, you are from Hit the Apex. Uh, so where can people find more from you? Yeah, so the podcast is on all the good podcast platforms. Yeah, Apple and Spotify and Amazon and Google and that. Um, there's a link uh, on a, the link tree attached to it that will take you through to my uh, profile for the Raw, the website I write for and live blog all the races for as well and other articles and Instagram and all that. So be sure to check that out. Also wearing my Grid Talk merch today as well. So time to plug that and also quickly point out that louis your mic is very reminiscent of the trophies that they're giving to the podium uh tomorrow so i don't know if yours is kiss activated as well but it's it's really funky so thanks for bringing it to the table i was gonna do some AM, S, asmr there but i think that might um it'd be quite horrible for a lot of people so i will not uh do it away 
please uh, take it away before I start. <laughs> yeah, if you do ASMR, I'm leaving like immediately. Um, no, uh, I would. Uh, if you wanted to, basically, <laughs> if you want to hear about all our shows, um, just make sure to follow Grid Talk UK. Uh, and that's at Grid Talk UK on all of the social medias with the at. <laughs> Fair enough. And Tom, of course, you also pre- uh, present Formula Talk. You nearly said prevent them. Um, I heard Pre- <laughs> Yeah, you prevent Formula Talk. Not today, Satan. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, God, this has got unhinged. Um, yeah, no, uh, yeah, so I uh, I co host Formula Talk alongside the Grid Talk panel, Sophia. Um, haven't done one for a couple of weeks. Uh, to be honest, we're both just. Mad busy with work and life and stuff, um. But yes, yeah, so we we cover off all things junior C, so F two, F three, F one academy. Um, you can find that anywhere. You can find Grid Talk, so you know all your socials and um podcast places and all the rest of it. Yeah, words, words. Okay, yeah, and if you want to find me, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at L underscore G underscore Edwards. Um, I think that it is, it's, it's one configuration of that. Uh, no, it's at, at Edwards underscore L underscore G because the last one got uh, weirdly removed from Twitter thanks to, well, X's weird, stupid policies. Anyway, um, we will, of course, be back tomorrow to uh, review the Japanese Grand Prix. So thank you very much for listening to the Grid Talk podcast presented by Bet Online. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, really we will well be done. staying live. We will be staying live for a little bit longer just to go through some of um, Jared's comments, who is very active in the chat today. Thank you very much, Jared. Um, Mr. Jared Bradley, by any chance. It is. Also, I just want to say about this mic, this this microphone. I did not. (laughs) So there's a mega. There's like a mega store in uh, like mega store chain in Japan called Don Quixote, and that book. Basically, they have like his. Yeah, no, no, but it's it's spelt it's spelt differently. Uh, it's not the same as Don Quixote, as in the thing. It's spelt differently. Um, it's the only I piece of literature to... knowledge I've got. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and they they have a section like within their within their store with like stuff for streaming. Um, yeah. So it's like a bunch of like razored like key- keyboard and microphone gear, and then I just picked up this sort of microphone. And I was like, "Oh, it'd be quite cool." I didn't realize how bright it was, and apparently, I can change the RGB on it, but I don't. I don't know how. Probably anyway, we'll get into, into the comments. In some kind of config. Zone. But before we do that, I've I've looked up those trophies uh, that uh, that Joe <laughs> was talking about, yeah. Um, and yeah, that it, the the resemblance is uncanny. But it's also, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's curse because because on it, it's like you say, it's kiss activated, right? It because on it it says kiss me, and that's just whoa. that's just weird. It's it's not a love whoa, heart. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not a love heart. There's like the sweet. It's oh, it's oh, it's odd. Daddy I don't. Chill. I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like it. That's unhinged. Oh, that's... Like, to, be honest, yeah. to be honest, if you slightly like this microphone, because if I tap the top of it, the RG, it like it mutes and it turns the RGB off. So, so if I was then oh, like yeah. to kiss the top of my microphone, mm. it would then light up, <laughs> which I'm not. Can we do. park that conversation <laughs> with with Strolls <laughs> Williams in the wall, please? Right. It's okay. Too, too right, early. I'll go think for that. I'll go. It's not even ten a.m. Oh, you bloody Europeans complain at the time. You're um, European. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, anyway, some comments. Um, so, um, Jared, Jared did pick up the thing of Lawson will have a seat somewhere next season. Sergeant has to be gone, so who goes to Williams? We kind of already touched on that, that he probably won't be in that Williams next year, but there's definitely opportunities 2025 for him. Um he also said agreed. He was uh, him and uh, Jared were having a little chat. He was saying they should uh, move some of those useless American races and and European races to Oz and New Zealand. <laughs> uh, well, we can 
<laughs> well, this I, I'm down. I'm down for that. Can we I don't... bin off s- s- some <laughs> of the oil money Middle Eastern races instead? Yeah, I'd be happy Especially to Qatar, get rid of those. Especially Qatar, because it's a shit time. Language. Also... <laughs> I did, never thought I'd hear you, you say that, Tom, to someone else to watch their language. <laughs> I know. That's how you know it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'd be a fan of getting rid of uh, yeah a couple of those American races and also the the Middle Eastern ones. Saudi definitely one because you're not going to get a missile strike in New Zealand of all places. So, well, you're going to get hit as sheep. We might as well have the Barry Island Grand Prix then. And and also, like with most of New Zealand, like I've I've seen the some of the roads. Like <laughs> you're more likely to to put them in a better condition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll be able to tell we've you guys because I'm. We've all watched there. that episode of Top Gear. I have been there. <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 I've been there twice. Like the roads are no, 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 no. <laughs> They have them. Yeah, I can, not a mess. I can they tell you all them. about they do, they do it next month. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's have a look. Uh, he said next year could be disappointing for Lawson, but Owain is right. That's weird. Um, I'm normally right. Uh, it's only <laughs> it's only so disappointing because Lawson has a an an unexpected opportunity and B he's performing so very well, which is yeah completely true. It's, like right, it's like it was. It's like some right. It's a bit weird, but it's just like it'd be like some like it, it'd be like someone going right. I'm just going to hand you this cake while I like you know nip to the loo, but I'll need it back when I'm when when you're done. You can have as much as you want, like. Of course, you're going to be disappointed because someone's taking a cake away. But on the other hand, mm. you're getting cake that you didn't expect to get. That's a great analogy, actually. And now, like, cake. that is a good way of putting it. Isn't that how the French Revolution started? Well, no, I mean, Marie Antoinette. I mean, the thing was, <laughs> you look what, as well when what, like Nico Hulkenberg. Cake. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> you look as well when Nico Hulkenberg had to. You look as well when Nico Hulkenberg had to do his super subs during the pandemic. You know, he took that opportunity with, with both hands as well and did really well. So, and if anything, it kind of put him back onto the radar to be picked up by Haas um, uh, at the, this year. So, you know, Lawson doing as well he, as he is at Alpha Tower, he, like it might be a surprise to some, but might not be a surprise to others. But yeah, it's just you know where is he going to fit in into this into this complex puzzle? And then you look at other drivers on the sidelines as well. Felipe Drogovic being talked about as well. Last year's F two champion, um, Mick Schumacher as well. We were talking about in the chat whether he should uh, Toto Wolf trying to put him towards uh, Williams and James Vowles saying, no, not really at the moment. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's some some decent drivers on the sidelines or, you know, kind of on the cusp of uh, wanting to make it into F1. And Teo Portchair is another one who will likely go on and win F2 this year, but he's going to be on the sidelines next year at Alfa Romeo or Sauber because um, they've decided to retain Joe and Bottas. I was going to think that this would be a really good episode for for you and Sophia, Tom, to talk about. It's like, is there any point in winning the F2 championship anymore? Because let's face it, it's not really getting anyone anywhere. Like, Nick DeFries won it and never got a seat in F1 until years later, after he'd yeah, won the Formula E title. And we've seen, yeah, and and we've seen how well that's worked out. Um, of that's course, the Russell... Do-do. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Schumacher, of course, got in, but we know that his name probably got a, a big carry of that as well. Um, Piastri didn't get his seat until years later. Um, Drogovic is now a sideline driver for Aston Martin, uh, and it's looking very unlikely he's going to get into that team until Fernando Alonso retires in his like mid 60s or, you know, Lawrence Stroll gets fed up with Formula One. Um, yeah, Teo Porcher is looking like he's going to probably win it this year, and he's going to be on the sideline because you've got Joe, who is a very well-backed driver and brings a lot of sponsors to a team that is going to be uh, quite low in terms of resources next season because they no longer have the Alfa Romeo backing. And Bottas, who is, I don't know, he's like Kimmy at this point. He's kind of just coasting through the end of his career. He is, isn't he? 
And, mm. Yeah, and let's say, and let's say, for instance, Iwasa wins. Uh, you know, it's very probable that he might. But let's say Iwasa wins next season's F two championship. Is there going to be a place for him at AlphaTauri when you already have Lawson there and Sonoda and is yeah. still the pref- yeah? But I said, and Sonoda is still the preferred sort of Honda driver at the moment. I don't know. Is but he going to get? Is, you got does Honda and Aston Martin in twenty twenty six. Does this mean also we should have more teams on the grid? You know, bring in the Andretti and uh, oh, is it oh, but, oh, but, oh, 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 but Toto said they don't have room. I was going to yeah, say, they, but the current, but the current teams don't like it, Jawood. The current teams don't like oh, it. And you have well, to listen to the current teams. Oh, well, and even the though, current even teams though are greedy, even and though have there's all a, the money in the world. There's a, oh, I said it on the hot takes episode, and it's not a hot take; it's a stone cold take. But. There is a set of requirements. Mm-hmm. If you meet the requirements, you should be let in. <laughs> exactly, but you know, no, they have and to. We, we have a hundred. Uh... We have a one hundred and seven percent rule for mm. a reason. <laughs> oh, yeah, it worked for it worked for HRT and Marussia back in the day. The one hundred and seven percent rule, but yeah, I just want to bring to everyone's attention too. So <laughs> Max Verstappen in the press conference after qualifying has told Red Bull detractors you can suck an egg so what's everyone's thoughts on that um I don't like to be I need to be taught how to suck eggs I'll teach you so what he, he told Red Bull so I'll basically bet. anyone <laughs> anyone who was criticizing Red Bull after Singapore um his comment to that was they can suck on an egg and I'm saying that quote unquote. He's working in a second language, probably a third. Well, no, to to be fair, he's probably saying that so so he doesn't get um, shouted at by Red Bull marketing, etc. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't, I don't think he. It's a bit, I mean, it's a bit egg on face. He can say it? what That's he like. No, it's one. No, he, yeah, he can he can say what he wants at the end of the day, and I think a lot of people did maybe go a tad overboard with the whole down with Red Bull thing in Singapore. But I think that's mostly because we got a really good race. If that if that Singapore race was like boring and completely dull, I don't think people would have cared as much um, that Red Bull weren't really in the fight for that win. Um, but I think we all knew that this was going to come. And if you thought that this was gonna, like Singapore was going to like carry on for the rest of the season, I think you were definitely gravely mistaken. And mm. I think we all knew that this was going to come. Back, <laughs> like the Red Bull were going to come. It was back. always going to happen. You, yeah, you can't have such a dominant car have one blip and then go. Oh well, that's the rest of their season. Yeah. They're going to crumble. No, they were they were always going to come back, and we've seen here. And Max has done an incredible job of anyone who thought that they were going to, you know, crash and burn to absolutely demolish the rest of the field. I don't. I don't think they were giving up the top spot on the. Uh... On the perfor- on the performance character, uh, sorry, on the performance hierarchy, they were just letting someone else rent it for a while. Like, well, not let's forget that Max also did make an incredible comeback on those medium tires showing the Singapore mm. race. Yeah, the guy did a great <laughs> job. Yeah. yeah, so I don't really see, you know, anyone. <laughs> what the point, like, what anyone's point is if they're trying to slag off about Red Bull and their performance. You know, they're doing a good job. Max is in, you know, the form of his life, basically, you know, like, yeah. So who out there that matters really is criticising them and saying it's bad for the sport, you know, don't need to listen to what they say anyway. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as I say, who, who uh, who's gonna you know um, give Rebel grief? I was like, well, you go on F on Twitter. If I go on my for you page on on Twitter right now, it's I'm guarantee I'm gonna have some someone with you know forty four in their username be like angry. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just the case, um, and people just are ridiculous online. I don't, I don't, I don't have Twitter for a reason, and yeah, it's quite fun to watch. Sometimes you get some of the worst takes, but then unfortunately, when you click on it or you hover over it for too long, 
uh, they take that as engagement and that they think you want more of it. Mm. <laughs> so you then just have to like ignore it for a couple of like weeks until it starts to go away and like gets replaced by other stuff. Yeah. Twitter's uh Oh sorry, Cesspit. X is that yes. That's that that's the word for Cesspit. Cesspit. Not a bit like uh, how it should be an X social network. It is. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm, on the I'm, on the end I'm of on, on that thing, we might. Before we get cancelled. Well, it's not before we get cancelled. I think most people could agree that X is a bit of a dive when it comes to social media platforms. Uh, yes. But as I said uh, in our Slack channel. Like the other day, it's like, unfortunately, I'm going to continue to use it until there is actually a decent alternative mm. to it. And yeah. right now, there just isn't. Like, Threads tried, but it's so basic in its usability. I forgot like, about at Threads. the moment. Yeah, exactly. People forgot about it. People stopped using it. I stopped using it after like three or four days because I'm like, they, yeah, this is great. It reminds me of like old Twitter, but there's not that live sort of like feed of stuff that you can get through especially when it comes to like sporting events not to mention the whole timeline wasn't even in order like yeah. i'd get stuff from like three days ago like appearing at the top of my timeline I'm from, I'm from like, people you didn't to... follow yeah exactly like they did like, i said i get what they're trying to do and hopefully like in the next sort of like year or two it will slowly sort of drag itself back but I feel with like most social media platforms these days, they kind of have to be on it straight away for people to use it, stay on it, and actually remember <laughs> remember to use it. Right. Mm, oh yes. I am going off now. <laughs> I think I think it's a good time to end the post show here. Thank you for all that have stuck around. Thank you for Jared, especially for getting involved in the comments. It's been great to see you. It has been a long time since I've done this, so it was quite nice to to have an easy one to sort of peel back into. And hopefully, I'll be back for more uh, when the racing is actually at an appropriate time. As Jared, <laughs> we'll say. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah. Um, thank you for tuning in um, and we will see you of course tomorrow uh, for the, the qualifying review so. mm-hmm.